talking about what makes you successful in life, relationships, and business. It's Jump, Pivot, and Roll with Shannon Stiles and Rachel Murphy. Good How morning. are you? I'm doing wonderful. Cool. Welcome to Jump, Pivot, and Roll. Yes, good morning to our listeners. We are so excited that you are here with us. And um, I'm really excited about this show, Shannon, because this is actually one of our listeners that wrote in, right? It is. And I'm actually going to share what the listener said. Um, let me go back to... I'm going to share a little bit about it, not the whole conversation. So I got a message saying, um, I definitely need something positive in my life. If anything, you and Rachel are speaking straight to me. I said, I'm so happy to hear that. We have so much great content to share with you. Let me know if I can ever help you in any way. Her response was, Rachel and I have known each other since 1985. She knows there's no help for me, LOL. But I keep trying. Thank you again. I said, never feel that way. If you feel that way, it me it just means there are still lessons you need to fulfill your dream. She said, that's what I heard from you both last last night. I just am not sure how to get there. And I said, we'll help you navigate that. Therefore, Rachel and I talked. And since we got this message, you know, we're here for you. We're here for the listeners. And we want to... We want to bring to you information that's going to help you. So today we decided to pitch the show we had scheduled, and we're going to talk about how to start, how to start your journey. Because it's so important that you understand that that's what we have done. That's what we all have to do is we weren't just born and then we hopped onto this path. We had to discover this path. And we believe that so many of you out there are somewhere either in the beginning or the middle, or hopefully there really is no end. So yeah, I mean, you might be growing. exactly where we're at. Exactly. And, and we might only be one chapter ahead of you. But if we're a chapter ahead of you, we can help speed up your process. And that's why we're glad that you're here and you're glad, we're glad that you're listening. We are. So let's jump right into this. I'll start with um, just a little bit of my journey. Because, okay. because I have always had this feeling in me that there's more. There's more to me, right? But my journey first started. So when I was younger, I worked in, I worked in bars and restaurants and like most kids do, right? And then I, got, I had an opportunity to go work for an office in an office setting. And I'd never worked in an office before. As a matter of fact, I had never used a computer before. Wow. And this office setting, the whole job was based around a computer. Did you know that before accepting the offer? Of course I did. Did and you tell him you knew the computer? Heck no. Okay. No, I didn't because then I wouldn't even be in the running, right? So it didn't come up. They didn't ask me anything about how proficient I am or anything. But I said, you know, I can learn anything. I'm a quick learner is what I said. And so I jump in. Now, the first job I was able to navigate a little bit. The second job I took was very detailed, very computer oriented. And I still knew nothing except for maybe how to turn it on and type up a memo, right? So I go in there and let me tell you, I screwed up everything you could screw, you could screw up on that. Everything. I, I talked to IT more than I talked to my boss. I would constantly be there with IT talking to him. And the one thing was I would take note and I wouldn't go to them to fix it. I would go to them to learn that's a big difference right there. So every time I would go there, I'd just kind of keep a mental note. And I sometimes I even kept physical notes of, of how to navigate through it and how to get past this. And it was probably about three months into my employment. And I had such a great relationship with these patient IT service people that one day my phone rang and they said, hey, Shan, 
do you remember when XYZ happened? And I said, of course, because I screwed them up for a while, right? And they said, how did we fix that? It happened to so-and-so's computer, and I can't remember what we did. And I said, I'll be right down. So I became the teacher, the IT specialist at the time. What? I became, I had learned so much about that because I knew that was the one week area, right? And I knew it was very important for me to get it. And everything I touched, I messed up because I knew nothing about it, but they were very patient with me and they became my mentors, right? And they taught me all of their knowledge when they were fixing what I messed up. And in turn, I became an expert at it. That's, that is an awesome beginning. That's, that's what it's about, right? So then I went to, as my career progressed, I ended up in management. And I'll tell you what, I felt like an imposter. Oh, yeah. I felt like such an imposter. Even though we did excellent on our numbers, we always made our goals. I mean, we did so good. I felt like an imposter because I felt like, well, I didn't have any formal education. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And and it always held me back from being the best that I could possibly be. So I, I dealt with that. I think we all deal with that. I mean, I remember when... Um I was at Clinique, Mm -hmm. and I started out as a part-time, 22 hours a week, and didn't feel like I knew a whole lot about makeup, but I loved it. I remember wishing one time when I had walked in there to be behind that counter, that that was like, that was my dream job, right? Not a job I would want now, no offense to anybody who has it, but it's not where I'm at anymore in my journey, but it was my dream. And so they're teaching me, you know, how to do the skincare and they're teaching me the proper way to do the makeup and they're, they're teaching me all of this. And our regional manager came in because I called her because right as I came in, the manager who had been there for years left. And when I say right as I came in, she hired me, she welcomed me and she was gone the next day. And so there were a lot of things at Clinique you had to do a certain way. You right. had this whole list and things you had to set up and all of this. And so I pull out the book, right, the instructions, and I start doing it. And um, Naomi was my original manager, and she came in and she said, who set up the counter and who set this up this way and who did that? Well, I thought I was in so much trouble, <laughs> right? Because I'm like, it was me. And I said, well, I, I did. I, I used the schematic and I, 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 I'm so sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. And she's like, yes, you do. She's like, and you're going to be my next business manager. And yeah. guess what? You were very successful at it. And I was the next yeah. business manager. And I was promoted over women who had been there for eight years teen years now let me tell you how much fun that is to become a manager over that but you know it was it was such an amazing experience and I did it in a very short amount of time but I went to the instructions and I took the chance and I did exactly as you did Shannon I wanted to not just know I wanted to learn and I wanted to own it and, and I think that's where the first lesson for the listeners comes in. You, if you have a passion for doing what you're doing and a desire to learn, yeah. I say do it anyway. Absolutely, 100%. Do it anyway. Maybe you don't have it all figured out. Do it anyway. Right. Right? Maybe you don't know how to use a computer. Do it anyway. Make it your goal to not only figure out how to do it, but to become the best at it. Well, and let's go back to the computer. What was the first thing you had to do? What do you mean? Turn it on. That's exactly how to turn it on. That's exactly what I mean. And I mean, which button do you push? So I pushed them all. Here's the thing is that you made a choice. Yes. And I want the listeners to understand how important that first step is. You make a choice. Everything in life, we have a choice. We have a choice of how to react or how to feel about something. Everything happens 
for us, not to us. It is a choice. You made a choice to sit down at that big, scary thing. And it it was scary. (laughs) Find the right button, right? I made a choice to open up a book and not necessarily listen to the outside voices who were my coworkers who had been there for years. And I said, well, but this is what the book says. And so this is what I'm going to do. And I made the right choice. You made the right choice. You're right. You're right. So you make a point that you opened a book and and you didn't necessarily listen to the, the workers. And I think that this is a good time to bring up a point that Sometimes when you get training, it may, it's a downfall, right? Because what I'm talking about is if you go in and you have proper training, you do it like everybody else, right? There's nothing that makes you stand out because you're doing it. Step one, two, three, four, five, just like everybody else. But when you have to figure it out, And when you make it your desire to figure it out and to be the best at it, that is where you become unique. That is where you find things that other people don't have. Because I'll tell you what, no one in that office had the IT skills that I had after three months. Oh, I bet. I bet. No one. You know, and it's, it's, I love that you make that point, Shannon, because this is what I believe. And let's take the current crisis right now, right? Everybody who is in the know is making the decisions for our country. The experts are knowing. There's a difference between knowing and learning. Learning means that we have an open mind and that we want to study things. We want to see how things are going to progress and grow. And when you're learning, that's when the amazing things happen because you're not in the I'm going to do it A, B, C, D. Yeah, you have an open mind. Absolutely. You have an open mind. And when your mind is open, you're then able to be very creative. Right. And you're able to see things that other people don't see. You can think out of the box. I mean, that's one of the things I feel like I'm really blessed in the career that I do is that I walk into a space and these poor people don't even know where to start. The overwhelm, the frustration is so there. This isn't my stuff. I can totally see how the puzzle is going to work together. Why? Because I'm not stuck in their knowing. I'm there to teach them and to help them learn. Now, you bring up, can totally see how the puzzle is going to fit together. At this time in my life, I didn't know how. I didn't have a vision for my life. I didn't know, but I knew I wanted to move forward. And I'll tell you what. Progress equals happiness. It does. Progress equals happiness. Absolutely. When you have a baby, they don't run. Right. They learn to sit up and then to crawl and then to use the furniture, but they still want to keep going forward. Yeah. How many, how many mothers out there do you know that after three, six, maybe even nine months of their child trying to walk, they say, just forget it. It's not going to happen. This is not for my child. Just forget it. Uh, z- zero would zero. be my answer. Zero. Yeah. I mean, there are even some mothers which I just admire greatly who their children were born with some kind, some type of disability, disability that caused them not to be able to walk. Yep. But they would not, they would not have that, right? Napoleon Hill. Napoleon I Hill. I love his story with his son. Yes, his son was deaf and mute. Born right? without ears, yeah. literally. Born without ears, could not hear anything, and he refused, refused to accept that for his son. So instead of instead of sending him to deaf schools and instead of, you know, doing all of these things that, that the disabled children do. The knowing yes, told you yes. to do. He said, my son is just like anybody else, and, and here's a step further. Not only did he do that, he put the bug in his ear that he is better than others. He did. He did because he knew when his son overcame this disability, and we don't want to make it sound like that every disability, you know, it doesn't have its 
roadblocks and it's pains and, and our hearts go out to anybody who uh, has course. that. I mean, ADHD is a disability. D- dyslexia is but a disability. But you have to you have to agree with me on this point. Where focus goes, energy flows, right? Ab- absolutely. So if you focus on that disability, that disability is going to become a larger problem. If you focus on overcoming the disability... Which is what Napoleon Hill did. Exactly. He taught his son that once he overcame that disability, that wasn't a weakness for him. That was a strength because he was going to have senses that those of us who have ears never had to develop. And it was an amazing thing. And his son did. I mean, his son was an amazing man all on his own. So go go ahead. All right, so back to the puzzle, right? Right. I didn't have the vision. I didn't have it all figured out, right? So I knew I wanted to continue to take the next step and and to better myself. I I didn't know how, but um, this actually goes back to um, I was engaged at one point, and my fiance's partner's wife said, what am I going, what will I have in common with her? Scrapbooking. And that was all because I made one scrapbooking page of a trip that we took to Las Vegas. So that stuck in my mind, right? It then became my mission. It's still your mission. It kind of drove me and it it still kind of drives me. And Piper, if you're listening today, thank you very much for being a little bit catty because it has it has driven me to be successful. So my next step was going to college. Now I have to tell you when I went to college, I was a single mother making $10,000 a year. Right. Going to college full time. My rent was $650 a month. Do the math. Right. Do the math. How did I survive? Not only did I sur- survive, I thrived. My son was in, com- in competitive ball. He played soccer competitively. We were on a traveling team. We went to, I mean, we would go to Oklahoma every weekend. We'd go to Texas. We went to, to Las Vegas. I mean, we traveled on $10,000 a year, right? And here I am, 40, in my 40s, going to college, right? Around all these young kids. That was tough. Yeah, but what did you do? What do you mean by what did I do? When you graduated, what well, did you do? Oh, uh, that's interesting. So so my focus was, you know, I didn't have the attitude of I'm too old. I didn't have the attitude of, you know, this is ridiculous. Why am I trying this? I should have done it when I was younger. My attitude was I am mature now and I can get the grades that that I deserve. Right. I graduated magna cum laude, not because that was my grade, because when I was younger, I went to college for one semester and I dropped out. But I didn't realize you have to officially drop out. So I had a whole semester of zeros. Oh, wow. I had a 4.0 when I went back to college. And that's because I was driven. It was the mindset that I gave myself. Right. And I think that's the difference is your mindset said me going back older is not a weakness. It's a strength. Yes. Yes. Again, you made that choice to see that situation, which I think a lot of our listeners get lost in that. They're like, okay, but I'm a single mom. How am I going to go back to college? Or I've been in this career forever, but I hate it and it doesn't feed me. You make... A choice. Yeah, and you have to block out those voices, those Absolutely. little voices. Now, here's where it got interesting. Okay. okay. So while I was in college, I was six credit hours from having my bachelor's degree, which I will finish at some time, at some point. But it no longer served me. I had gotten enough out of college, and I had paid $45,000, right? Still paying on it. But I had gotten enough. We always talk about just that little nugget that you need, right? right? I had gotten enough that now I had an opportunity to purchase an insurance agency. And let me tell you, that was scary. I was going through a divorce. My husband was living with another woman. 
I was in in Chicago arguing with him 24-7 while I was supposed to be learning how to run this agency. And I'd never really, I owned a business before, but I had a great partner and I, I just did the mechanical stuff. She ran the business. I didn't know what it took to run a business, but you know what? I did it anyway. And I think that's, that's the point that we really want to make is that you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have all the knowing. You need to have the heart to learn to take those opportunities, to jump, to to pivot where you need to. That yeah. and you rolled and, and the with what you you did all of those. Yeah, and that. you know I had to. You have to be secure in in knowing what you want because it's okay to piv- to pivot and to decide to move into a different direction. Six credit hours, six credit hours before my bachelor's degree. Again, I will go back and finish up, but I've got too much going on right now because I had a vision. I had bigger and better dreams. And you know what? Those are even changing. Mm -hmm. I've still got the agency, but now I want to serve people. Right. Well, you always wanted to serve people. That's why you took on the the agency. Well, the agency was to serve people, but now I want to serve people. And, you know, as we talked in the last episode, I have put in so much money and I'll tell you what, five years from now, we'll be talking millions, not $100,000. We'll be talking, I'm investing millions in myself. But I want to share that information because not everybody's at the point that they're going to jump. Well, and here's something that I want to point out to our listeners as well is that Shannon has definitely invested a lot into that. And it's important to invest in yourself. But it doesn't have to be. If your path does not have you there yet, it doesn't have to be thousands or tens of thousands. It starts with, well, for example, with my my journey, I picked up Tony Robbins' book because I seen him on an infomercial. And I remember thinking, man, that dude is really tall and he has the whitest teeth I've ever seen. And I was holding a crying baby, but I started listening to him and I thought, oh, because he sparked something, something in me, some little light came on, like Shannon said, all of a sudden, I wanted more. So how did I start? I picked up his book and I read his book. And then this is the amazing thing that happened. I finished his book, and two weeks later on B98, Tracy Cassidy and Brett came on, and they said, we are having a contest. We are having an essay contest, and the winner will receive two tickets to go see Tony Robbins. And I said, guess what? That winner's going to be me. And it was. And with that, we're going to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors don't go far because it's not a big break and you don't want to miss what we have to share with you next you're listening to jump pivot and roll we'll be back in just a moment the jump pivot and roll podcast is brought to you in part by the shannon styles all-state insurance agency just as you take that next step in life you need to take that next step in protecting yourself your car your home and your family Reach out to Shannon at 316-773-9864 or shoot her an email at sstyles at allstate.com. Also by Simplify My Life ICT. Is your life cluttered? Do you need help with organization? Rachel Murphy can help. Check out Rachel's services online at simplifymylifeict.com or reach out to Rachel at simplifymylifeict at gmail.com. To keep up with the Jump, Pivot, and Roll podcast, make sure to follow them on their Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com forward slash jump, pivot, and roll. There you can find content, podcasts of the show, discussions with Rachel and Shannon, and more. Plus, make sure to subscribe to the podcast on any of your favorite podcasting sites. From iTunes and Spotify, Google Play to TuneIn, and right on their Podbean site at jumppivotandroll.podbean.com. And for all the exclusive content, make sure to become a VIP member on their Patreon site. Just go to patreon.com forward slash jump, pivot, and roll.
and welcome back to Jump, Pivot, and Roll. Thank you very much to our sponsors. Before we went on that short break, Rachel was talking about her journey started just just slow. She started reading a book, and she read one of Tony Robbins' books. And let me throw in there, the reason that she read that is because success leaves clues. Absolutely. And that's what books are. Books are clues. Books are Books help you to accelerate your journey. Books help you to not have to make the mistakes that everyone else made. Right. right? Books, podcasts, things, yes. people, things that feed you and they start to get you excited. Those are things you should cling on to and you should invest your time. Turn off the Netflix and put on a podcast that feeds you. If the outside voices are coming in at you, and they're just sending all these darts, put on something that feeds your soul. Yeah. Because that's going to be when that light comes on inside of you. Listen, go back to Tony Robbins, right? What you focus on. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So so that is the beauty of what we have. We have control over our own thoughts, our own minds, right? Right. So real quick, we just shared, and I shared more than you did, but a little bit of our journey, right? So I want to talk about a couple of things that they can do if they're just kind of stuck. I like that. All right. And the first thing that I recommend, and I want, I want you to recommend because I know you have some great recommendations also, but the first thing I want to start with is to imagine that you have two days, you you get to go back in time, and you have two days to talk to your younger self with all of the, the knowledge that you have now, and you have five days to prepare for this. What is it that you would tell your younger self? Oh, that's really good. And, you know, hopefully we've got some younger listeners out there who are just kind of starting on that journey. But this works for you too because you're not 16 anymore. And who you are at 20 is not who you were at 16. So, you know, Shannon, that is such a beautiful way to really look at what you need to do next and how far you've actually already traveled because we don't give ourselves credit for every baby step we take. You're right. And, and it's going to highlight to you what you're passionate about. Yes. So take it a step further, right? Okay. Write a letter to your younger self. Yes. Talk about your worries, your obstacles, the dreams that you had, the, why you did things. Talk about your pain and what brought you pleasure and how to get more pleasure. Talk about all of those things because those are going to be key to you to keep taking steps forward and to, to keep going forward in this journey or to maybe, maybe help you through a tough time. Right. Or to pivot or to change that because, you know, I think about the letter I would have written myself 10 years ago. And I think about the letter I would have written myself 20 years ago. And they're different. Why are they different? Because I'm continuing to grow because I'm continuing to learn. But I think that letter is such a fantastic idea, because it also tells you what you're going to put up with, what you're going to accept as okay, and what you're not. And that type of guide in your life when it gets hard and you go back and you read that and you take that in, it's like, oh, yeah, I said I wouldn't accept that. I said I wouldn't listen to that voice. Well, you're planting the seeds early, right? It, Rachel and I always talk about how we wish. I mean, I wish I would have been. Well, I was introduced to this. My aunt listened to Zig Ziglar all the time. And I. I got, I think I got, I think she planted the seed in me to want more, but I wasn't around it enough. And, and once she planted the seed, it wasn't watered. So it, it didn't have time to really grow and flourish and harvest. 
the harvest is now, right? right? But had I known and had I spent more time with my aunt back when I was younger, I'd be, yeah, today I would be on stages and I would be, I would be impacting the world in such a, not that I'm not impacting the world right now, but I would be touching so many more people, right? You know, and I, I love that, but I also want to point out to our listeners and the fact that if you don't live to your potential, if you let those outside voices and those outside influences steal that away from you, you are stealing something beautiful and rare from the world because we are each given a mission that is just meant for us. Our little part makes part of that big puzzle. And I think it starts with, and I really want to bring this up strong, self-care. Because as women, especially, we are taught or have been, thank goodness this new generation is getting smarter about this, but we were taught, I was taught, that self-care is pretty selfish, And it's not. It is loving yourself enough so that you can love others. And, you know, self-care is shutting out those outside voices, whether it's your mom or your kids or your siblings or your spouse or your boss. And I'm not saying don't listen to things that are going to help move you and help you learn because Shannon if you hadn't listened to the IT guys when they were trying to help you that's right how far would you have gotten but I went to the experts right yeah yeah you weren't just listening to your you weren't just listening to your co-worker yeah that wouldn't have gone anywhere I went to the right people and that's the point I want to make if somebody comes up to you and says you know you are so self-involved and and this is a mentor this is somebody who loves you they're like maybe you want to step that back that is not self-care yeah and there's a big difference but self-care is filling the picture so you can fill somebody else's cup so i love that i love what you're saying you're a hundred percent on point and thank you it reminded me of something that Ed Milet, one of our our mentors, um, says. And when you were talking about don't be selfish and and you have to share your gifts. So Ed Milet talks about he he had this vision that one day he would show up in heaven and he would meet his twin self. And that was the man that God designed him to be. But if he didn't take the steps necessary and if he didn't if he didn't face his fears and, you know, learn what he was supposed to learn and take that plunge, he would never become that man. So his whole focus is on is on becoming the man that he was designed to be so that he doesn't show up in heaven and see someone that he doesn't even know who was designed to be his twin. That is excellent. Here's something else I want you to know, especially if you are just starting this journey. And I think this is something Shannon and I have learned very, very well, almost too well at times, is when you start to change things and when you start to say, I count to and my passion and my dreams and my purpose have a purpose, you are going to get hit with outside voices. You are going to have people that you love and care about question your why and your selfishness. And okay, so let's let's be true. Let's go back to when I first started my journey. Okay. (laughs) How many of my friends and family were were supporting me? Uh, Not many. Yeah. Yeah. How many of how many times did I get calls saying I am stupid for spending so much money? I need to stop doing that. I need to focus on paying the bills. I need to focus on what needs to be done. I need to be a better wife. I need to blah 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 blah. And here's the thing is you were becoming a better blah blah blah. You just weren't doing it the way that 
they, those who set right. the rules for you, thought you should. Here's here's a word that and I have learned that I absolutely love from one of the books that I'm reading, and it's called Rules. B R U L E S. Do you know what rules are, Shannon? Mm-mm. They're bullshit rules. And excuse my language, but you will hear me say rules. And here's the thing that I want you to understand. If somebody else's rule does not fit into where you're going with your life, it's a rule. And their chains do not belong on you. It is your decision to decide how to live that life. And Shannon, those were their rules for you and your path. And what, what my response to everyone at the time was, is I appreciate your concern, but I'm not going to let your limitations drive my life. I'm not going to let your limitations stop me from becoming what I'm supposed to become. Exactly. And how much better are you to be a mom, a wife, a business owner, a mentor, a person in society who is giving back, a radio host, a podcast host? All those things are happening and you're better at them because you said, I count too. Yeah. Well, not only did I say I count too, I believed. I believed that what I was doing were the correct steps to get me to where that vision is, what that vision is. And And you have to have faith and you have to believe. And that's what we want you, our listeners, to start on. We want you to sit down and write that letter. We want you to look at the rules that hold you captive and say, is this my rule or a rule somebody else put on me? Yeah. And the final thing, we, we're we going to have to wrap it up. I, uh, we could go on and on about this. We love and, this. Yeah. And we might have to do more episodes about this because we've learned so much as we've done this through our journey that we want to share with you. But the final little tip that we can give you is be comfortable being uncomfortable. That's my word for the year, guys. I literally wrote it on the first day of the year on my mirror, and I went and looked up uncomfortable, and then I created a mission statement for myself. Being uncomfortable in the or comfortable in the uncomfortable is life changing. It, it is. That's where you find hard. your creative creativity. That's where you find your strength. That's where you. That's where you see the person develop. And if if you start facing those fears, you know, one of the things that my husband is deathly afraid of is is being in a large body of water. I've now gotten him in large bodies of water numerous times now one time he jumped off the side of the catamaran and swam out before I could even come up but it was a baby step right it was progress now I can get him to go to the lake with me and sit on a noodle for an hour because he faced his fears so do the things that make you uncomfortable if you don't know where to start start there right start where you're most uncomfortable do the hard things first and it doesn't have to be big. If you're afraid to walk into the body of water, walk into the shore. Just take 10 steps forward and say, the water's hitting my knees. I'm at least in it. We don't want you to think that it all just happens overnight. It doesn't. No, not at all. But it's choices every day. And it's taking those baby steps of being uncomfortable because you will find so much joy and freedom and passion in those moments. And always remember progress equals happiness because think about the last time that you went on a diet maybe and you lost one pound and then you lost three pounds in a week. You weren't where you were, you weren't where your goal was, but you were making progress and you could see how you could get there. Now think about when you achieved that goal weight. How exciting was it to you? That's a good point. How exciting was it to you six months after that? Right. A year after that? Well, I can, So enjoy the journey. Right. I can tell you yesterday because, you know, I've been working out and I've been, you know, doing that religiously for me. That's my self-care at five in the morning. 
And yesterday, for the first time, I was able to get some old jeans on, right? Yes, I was able to pull them up and I was able to button them, but it wasn't comfortable. But (laughs) it's okay. You got them on. I was able to get them on (laughs) and I was able to button them and I was able to say I'm making progress. That's right. And I want to leave this this quick statement with you guys. So dare to live your precious days on earth to their fullest, true to yourself with open heart and thoughtful mind and with courage to change what doesn't work and accept those consequences. You may find that you fly farther than you ever imagined. Who can we credit that to? That is from Venetian. Excellent. Excellent. So guys, listen, find your passion and your desire. Find your desire to learn. Remember, the first step's what's important. Make a choice to take the first step. Education is very important, but self-educating, that's what makes you unique. Don't stop until you succeed. Don't be the child that never walks because you gave up, right? Your mindset can become a strength. You choose how you, your perception of things. So choose wisely. And get don't, rid of the rules. Don't listen to other people and their doubts. Don't have, you don't have to know it all, but do it anyway, right? It's okay to pivot if you decide that you went into something that, eh, maybe that's not really what I want. Go ahead and pivot. And who cares? Do it in the middle of it. If you know, you know. Move on. You can start slow by reading a book. Take shortcuts, listen to podcasts, read the books. Take time to write yourself a letter to your younger self. And be specific. Yes. Make that vision clear as day, like you're turning on a movie and you see that person and you see those standards and those values. Yeah. Don't don't be selfish. And what I mean by being selfish is don't let fear stop you from sharing your gifts. Right. Take care of yourself. That's not selfish, right? Don't believe other people's words of selfish or definition of selfish. Don't show up to heaven and see someone that you don't even know who is designed to be your twin. When you start recognizing your value, that's when you're on your way. Have faith and believe in that vision that you have. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. And most important, enjoy the journey. It's a beautiful journey. And it's not going to be easy. And and we don't want to paint this, oh, it's just so easy. But easy is never worth it. You know, I might disagree. Which you're welcome to. Once you, once you start studying other people and you start taking those steps, it becomes easy. It does become easy, easy. but it doesn't become easy in the beginning, but it, you're a hundred percent right. When you start making you count, when you start doing that list that Shannon just shared with you, then luck and ease and karma all come into play. Does it? Well, the universe aligns. <laughs> it does. It's like and, all the stuff. And you start up. hearing conversations of people. This is another another episode, and we're going to have to wait on that. But we can't wait to share with you, and we can't wait for the guests that we have lined up for you. Um, we're just so glad that you're on this journey with us, and we are. Just remember, you know, it's okay. Life life doesn't come with directions, and it's going to throw you detours. But we're going to help you figure out how to jump, pivot, and and roll through that. Absolutely, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in with us. And please don't forget to subscribe, share, share this out. If there was some little nugget that you got or you know somebody who's struggling and it's like, oh, if she heard this, if she's seen that maybe she was in the same spot that Shannon was or Rachel was, maybe this would give her something tag that person, share it out. And please, most of all, leave us a review, leave us your thoughts, leave us your questions, because that is why we are coming here every week is to serve you and to grow with you. Share your favorite comment, your favorite aha and nugget in the comments. Have a great week. Bye guys.